Amish furniture fans. Welcome back to the Amish Furniture Podcast from Dutch Crafters, the largest online retailer of Amish furniture. I'm Beth Rice, and I've worked for Dutch Crafters for five years. And I'm Milka Rivera, and I worked for Dutch Crafters, recently named a best place to work by our home city's paper, the Sarasota Herald Tribune, for four years. If you're tuning in for the first time on the Amish Furniture Podcast, we give you behind the scenes look at the art and heart of Amish furniture, from how some Amish became furniture makers to how Amish furniture is made and stories from trips to Amish country. Thank you for joining us. On today's episode, we are going to take you with us to Amish furniture trade shows. You may be surprised, but just like a lot of industries, the Amish furniture industries do hold trade shows uh, where they showcase their furniture and products. And while they're closed to the public, they're an opportunity for us who work in the furniture industry to come in and get acquainted with the vendors themselves, with their products, and learn more about them. The trade shows are held in Amish country, Ohio, Indiana, and Pennsylvania, and they're one Wonderful to visit and learn about the products. Dutch Crafters owners Jim and Lindsay Miller visit several trade shows a year for the reasons I mentioned, and they take a few employees to each of the shows for the same reasons. Two of the employees that have visited shows are my co-host Milka Rivera and Natalie Campos, who we are excited to have joining us in our respective makeshift home studios. They will both be sharing their experiences with us today. Welcome to the podcast, Natalie. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's jump right in. Natalie, when did you go to a show and, and where was it? Um, so the first show I actually attended was in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. That was back in, I believe it was about 2015. Milka, when did you go and where was the show you attended? Um, I went to a show in Indiana. It was the Northern Indiana Woodcrafters Association or the NIWA and it was in early 2017, I want to say. Did you have any expectations and or did anything surprise you that you weren't expecting? Um, I had actually been kind of on the other side of trade shows before. Before working for Dutch Crafters, I had worked for like wholesale apparel company. So I, I had actually been a vendor at shows before. So now I was kind of getting to be, you know, the person visiting the vendors. So... I will say that, you know, kind of being a vendor at shows before other vendors, you know, where you're kind of competing for business, other vendors are not necessarily nice to you. Um, but I felt like this was the opposite, you know, and I realized it seemed like everybody was kind of being friendly with each other and they were also, you know, really friendly towards us as well. So I don't know, maybe I was a little bit surprised by that, how interested they were in, you know, getting to know us. Of course, they already knew Jim and Lindsay. Most of them knew Jim and Lindsay already because they've been working with them for years. But, you know, for me, I think when when I went to this show, I was still a fairly new employee. And, you know, they they all welcomed with open arms, which was really nice. That nice, warm welcome which we we experience when we go on on trips to the wood shops too. Everyone is so warm and and welcoming. Well, let's walk our Amish furniture fans through the experience of going to a show. So, Natalie, this show is held in the convention center. When now when you headed into the show, what did you see? Can you describe a little of what you first saw when you walked in? So when I walked in um, to the show uh, at first, there weren't as many vendors as I expected. Um, there were quite a bit, probably I would say about at least 40 or so. Um, each booth was fairly large though. Um, they had enough room to fit in several of their sets, not just pieces sets. So maybe there may have been a whole bedroom set and then they may have had some extra pieces, including that, um, you know, I would say maybe couch, you know, a couch or some recliners there set up as well. So it wasn't just one set. They had actually several different sets on display for each of them. Um, I remember just starting to the right. Um, we walked down the aisle. It was just half an aisle there. And we actually seen some of the builders there. We started talking to them and Jim and Lindsay would start communicating with them, but it took so long. We were talking to them for about an hour. So Scott, um, Heidi and I, we all went together. We started walking around, taking a look at all the other vendors and see what they had to offer. See if we knew any builders in that, you know, in that convention center that we currently worked with. 
as we walked down that first aisle that I mentioned to you, there was a beautiful display of the hats, like the Amish hats oh, along yes. a windowsill. And I took a picture of it. There was probably about, I think there was about five hats and it was just so beautiful the way they were all sitting there displayed. Mm -hmm. And then the sun was shining through. So it was such a beautiful image. I took a picture of that and I've always kept it. I'm glad you got a picture of that. I would like to see that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Was there a favorite booth uh, that caught your eye at the show? Um, so there was a few other vendors that I do remember working with there. Um, Smucker Woodworking was there and he had some of his displays, gun cabinets there displayed, but he also came up, came out with a brand new like curved bar. So I remember seeing that, um, it was huge. It looked like it could just be in a casino there, it had like all gold trimming and um, and I do remember seeing uh, Y&T. He had a lot of his products um, on display, some living room furniture there. Uh, so I was looking at the quality and just kind of comparing, you know, the different quality from each vendor and what they offered, what some of their, you know, what they did in their finishes uh, versus their uh, um, construction of each like drawer and um, hardware and things like that. Was there any specific decor you noticed? You know how they set up their area with the products and then sometimes they have really neat decorations and that type of thing. Yeah, I remember um, Truewood actually had a really nice setup there. Um, their display with their kitchen islands and the tables there. I remember that that was really nicely set up. I think there was a nook set that they had displayed there. And they were kind of showing us how to open some of their kitchen tables um, you know, with the configuration of the slides and things like that. But that was a really nice setup that they had there. Sounds nice. Now we're there from, from Dutch crafters to look at the new products and the vendors are there to show us what they have been working on. So you mentioned Natalie that, um, you're looking at, you know, you're kind of, you're comparing the quality of the items, the features, um, questions about the stains you, you posed. Um, what other things did you talk about with vendors? If, if anything else, as you were going booth to booth to find out about the products? Uh, we kind of just spoke with them a bit, mostly about like the construction. I would say, especially like drawer boxes. Um, we talked to a lot of the uh, builders there that made dressers, you know, how those were made, what wood was used inside those, because those are some of the features that us as sales staff, we really didn't get to see or display on our website. So it was really important kind of to relay that information back to our customers um, and let them know how those are constructed, what wood was being used in some of those products, and um, if they're stained or not. A lot of builders, you know, don't stain the inside of their drawer boxes. Some do and some don't. So it just was really important to share that information with our customers based on that particular product. Absolutely. That's such a big part of the uh, sales team, um, their job, um, all these details. And I've mentioned this, uh, in prior podcasts, but, you know, we at, um, Dutch crafters work with, I believe just over 150 wood shops up there in Amish country. So that's a lot for you guys to, um, keep track of, but so important that the customer know, you know, the product they're looking at and specifically what happens with the stain and what the drawer is made of and the features and that type of thing. Right. Yes, Definitely. Milka, now we're going to turn to you. So where did you fly into and where did you stay uh, during your trip? We flew into Indianapolis also. We almost missed our flight. So like Jim and Lindsay, I don't think came into the office that day. They were just like, you know, we're going to meet you guys at the airport. So I remember we stopped for lunch and then it was kind of like we lost track of time sort of thing. So like the plane was already boarding and we had oh. to... <laughs> We had to like walk out onto the tarmac to get onto the plane because it was also a smaller plane. So I just remember, you know, we get on the plane and it's like, there's Jim and Lindsay, like already seated in their chairs. And Lindsay said <laughs> something like, didn't think you guys were going to make it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Late on the company yeah. trip, yeah. almost. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh, well, I am glad that you didn't miss the plane or miss the show. So take us in, take us through the door when you walk in. What do you see? Uh, so when we first walked in, I remember there was like a table to the left and it was like a Niwa, like NIWA branded bag. 
And it was like a reusable grocery bag. I actually still use it to shop for my groceries now. And then when we first walked in to the right of us, there was our vendor who does the kitchen, the kitchen islands with the butcher block tops. Oh. Um, and they had like a little bit of a smaller booth. But I remember just automatically like being impressed. Like Jim and Lindsay knew who the vendor was and automatically went over there to them and just started talking to them. And I just started looking around and I mean, I had seen the furniture, right? Because we have it in our showroom, but we don't get to see every single piece, you know, that is made. So I just remember being like, I need one of these kitchen islands in my house, even though my kitchen, (laughs) my house already has a kitchen island. (laughs) Um, And I remember that vendor was also had created a like wood shop, um, Uh, like a a set for if you're like a woodworker that you can put in your garage. It was like a hutch for your tools and stuff. And it was a newer item. And I think we were all like just super impressed by it. And of course he had, you know, decorated it with like a bunch of tools and stuff so that it would, you could see what it like would look like in your own home. And it was really, really neat. Um, I think I was like, oh, I need this too, even though I don't do any sort of woodworking and never use any tools. (laughs) I just wanted that whole show. I was like, just get, just can you take everything take to my house? And one of these and one of these. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's really hard not to do that. I feel like I just because you can also shop the shows. Like there are some you know Amish uh, retailers who th- what they sell is like items that they purchase off of the floor at the shows. So it's like, you can only get that one piece. It's not like you can do with us where you can customize, you know, you see something you like and there's options you can choose from and you can customize it even further. But I just cannot imagine having to, if you're one of those people, like having to pick which pieces, you know, you want, because I'm sure you have limited as a shopper, you have limited items of, you know, you have a budget you have to work within. Cause I just be like, just give me everything. (laughs) I think I've written uh, somewhat about when I write about Amish furniture, I just it's, it's an experience, I refer to it sometimes as it's such an experience, because it just gives you such room to dream, and to envision what you want to create. Yes, because of the availability of the customization. So, um, so you saw kitchen islands, and you saw some tool storage. And what other products were laid out at this show? So to the left when you first walk in was one of our dining table vendors. And of course, Jim and Lindsay knew them. So they sat there and talked to them for a while too. And I was also there to, as a member of the marketing team, I was taking pictures. You know, I remember there were a bunch of, there were a few different dining table vendors. I remember there was a children's furniture vendor. So you got to see some of the cribs and stuff and the ones that turn from the crib into the twin sized bed, you know, as the, as your child continues to grow. And then one of the vendors there, which was kind of towards the back area of the show does the big conference tables that we have. Nice. Nice. I believe we have a picture of you and Lindsay and Mary sitting at a dining table at that show. Yes, um, that is Normandy. The Normandy. Oh my goodness! Yes, we we had gotten the Normandy in the showroom. It's a single pedestal, right? Yes, it's this beautiful sculptural single pedestal with like a round top, and you can add leaves to it so it becomes more of like an oval style, and you can add more people. I I want that dining table with with all these. Fa- did you have a favorite booth or just everything? i mean (laughs) there were booths that stood out um they did bedroom furniture and they were doing upholstered headboards which we had a few upholstered headboards but they still had the wood visible in them at that time and this one it has the wood frame um but it's completely upholstered and they just did a great job like decorating their booth as well where they made it feel like they had it sectioned off. So it was like you were in your own like little bedroom and everything and just the accessories that they included, you know, it felt like, okay, this is what my bedroom could look like. So that was really impressive. And I remember that they had, um, they did have goodies, but I remember they had their own coffee that they roast themselves. So they gave us like bags of coffee beans, 
Um, and that was really nice. I love coffee. Oh, of course. This was also the show where the molasses cookies were there. It's our <laughs> the booth that had the um, entertainment centers in it. Um, they had the molasses cookies. And so, I mean, that stood out. And then there was like a couple booths that I especially just like bonded with the owners of the company. We went and sat down with them at one of their dining tables. And really, we were like standing there and um, the owner goes, hey, just come sit down at one of the tables. So we sat there and they all sat at the table, too. And it almost felt like we were just having, you know, like a conversation around the dinner table with like old friends. Um, and when they came to town, like a couple months later, you know, they invited me and, and the portfolio manager out to dinner. And the other bit that I would say that I, you know, felt like I formed a connection with was one that makes wind chimes. And I think it was because some of their wind chimes were huge. So I'm 5'1", I'm not tall by any means, but some of their wind chimes were taller than me. And I think I was just like so shocked by that. I was like standing next to them and making people take photos of me like next to these wind chimes that were taller than me. And I think they thought it was hilarious. So, um, you know, I ended up like, you know, I felt making like a strong connection with them too. So I need to see that picture. There's some, I mean, we have so many great photos from, from trips and things, but I haven't seen the wind chimes taller than Milka picture. I will see if I can find it. I know it is somewhere <laughs> and I will send it your way. Please. I can't go forward without seeing that. Um, so that sounds like such a great variety to get to um, observe at the show. So when you were sitting at the dining table and you're just feeling like you're having an around the table conversation with the vendors, what are you all, what were you all talking about? It's kind of funny because they don't, I feel like they didn't want to necessarily talk business. They just wanted to talk to us and kind of get to know us better and, you know, see how we're doing and that kind of stuff. We're the ones that were asking questions because there are certain questions that we need to know. You know, Natalie mentioned it's a good opportunity uh, for us to go because we get to ask some of those questions that, you know, customers ask us all the time. Um, you know, or sometimes you'll see something in person that you didn't realize had some sort of feature. So then it's like you have a question about that feature. Um, but it really felt more like they just wanted to get to know us better and continue to form, you know, those bonds with us. That's great. So Natalie, um, knowing what you know now after having the experience of visiting a trade show, um, what would you have been missing out on or how would your experience working with Amish woodworkers be different if you had not been able to attend these, to attend a show? I definitely became a lot more humble in this experience, realizing that they are a whole different world. And that's kind of what I would try to relate to some of our customers when speaking with them, um, that we are, they're not fast paced and they're always on the go. They enjoy their life, their, the style that they have there. And just seeing that where they work um, in their shops, because I not only went to the shows, I actually went to their shops as well and seeing their setup there and how hard they work and what, you know, all the hand tools that they use. There's not like machinery where they just punch in numbers and it's digitally made or cut. It's just, it bec you become a little bit more humble when you see things like that. So going there um, to the Amish country as well, you learn about their community and how honest and preserved they are you know, speaking with them and where they have come from and how long they've been in the business and how hard they work. It just makes you feel a little bit more appreciative that you have something to stand up for and work as hard, you know, through Dutch crafters selling their products. I love that. It's, it's, uh, it takes your work to a whole different level to feel great about the product you're representing and the people behind it and the work that they do. If you had not gone to a show, what would you be missing out on? Um, or how would your experience of working with, with Amish woodworkers be different if you hadn't gotten to meet some of them and, and witness the show? I mean, I, I think it's just like anybody, you know, if you talk to someone for, you know, a while over the phone, but you never actually get to meet them in person, um, there's still like a little bit of a disconnect, um, so it's just so lovely to get to meet them all in person. And it really does kind of strengthen that bond. And then so it's like when you when you talk to them on the phone again, you ha you know what they look like sort of thing, you know, like you can picture them. Right. Um, 
So I mean, yeah, I mean, it's such a wonderful opportunity. I'm so lucky that I got to go on one of those trips. And I feel especially so early on, um, you know, working with the company. Um, it's just such a great opportunity to, you know, kind of get to see how the Amish live in a way. I mean, it's a little bit different because it's a show. So, you know, it's it, it's a little bit more business oriented. Um but they do such a good job of like putting you at ease and just, you know, like we, like I talked about before, they just really want to get to know you. It's not so much about like the business and they want you, I think too, sometimes I think, you know, they build these pieces and they're just so proud of them. It's almost like they get so excited, like, cause they want you to see what they've built. Yeah. And it's not even like in a bragging way. It's just, I don't know. It's just kind of like, you know, it's like a little kid, like being proud of you know, something that they accomplished and they made sort of thing. So I don't know. It just, it really makes you enthusiastic about, you know, selling the product. Absolutely. And I, what you're um, relaying there um, matches uh, Natalie's experience somewhat when she spoke about how proud they are of what they they made, um, what they build, what they offer, you know, how true their work is and just how humbled you are by, how humbled we are by that, um, that experience meeting them and, and getting to witness a little bit of their way of life and just that slower pace. It's nice to slow down sometimes and, and really learn about, about, uh, your product. So, so before we end today's episode, Natalie, is there anything else you'd like to add about your trade show trips? The only last thing I'd like to add is that hopefully COVID will be over soon so that we can, um, take all of our sales associates uh, to Amish country so they can be able to share their experiences with, you know, some of our customers going forward. Yes, absolutely. That is a on everyone's wish list, I think. I hope that is something we'll be back to very soon. So let's see, Milka, is there anything else that you would like to add about, about visiting an Amish furniture market before we wrap up today? I mean, really, I think that, you know, you, you said it already, kind of the thing to take away from it is the, you know, slower pace and everything. It's so easy to get wrapped up in everyday life and technology and that kind of stuff. And it's, you know, it's, it's such a breath of fresh air to have, you know, a few days where you're not, you know, tied to technology and people just want to get to know you and have conversations and that sort of thing. Absolutely. It just feels great to be around. And then, of course, the candy and the homemade oh, yeah. coffee. And the cookies. Um, those, the, co <laughs> the molasses cookies, those things, you know, they don't hurt. They're just delicious things. It's true. All right. That's it. That's it for episode eight. Thank you so much, Natalie. It was wonderful having you come on with us. You must come back. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for coming Thank on. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. You too. That is it for this episode. What is it like to visit an Amish furniture market? If you enjoyed this episode, please like or rate it and or leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. Also, make sure to follow or subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Next week, we'll sit down with one of our woodworkers for an in-depth chat on how he got into the business, what it's like to run a shop, how the furniture is made, and more. We would also love to hear from you. If you're currently shopping for Amish furniture and have questions or have visited a wood shop, show, or Amish country and have a story that you would like to share, please email us at podcast at dutchcrafters.com. Your questions or story may be featured on or become a topic of a future episode. Thanks so much for listening. Until next week. Bye.